you are probably heard of Spring Data JPA. But what is it really? Why are so many Spring Boot developers focused on it? And why should you care? Let's dive in. Hi friends, welcome to this channel. I am Iftekar and just like you, I build with Spring Boot every day. Here in this Spring Data JPA series, I am sharing the things I learned on this. I will share step by step guides with real world code. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next videos. I have also opened a discord where you can share your ideas, request tutorials and help each other. Check out the link in the description. Without further delay, let's get started. In Java, there are several ways to work with data. Each new approach solves the problem of the previous one and makes things easier. To understand Spring Data JPA, we need to have the knowledge of the key tools, JDBC, JPA, Hibernate and Spring Data JPA. At the foundation of all Java database interaction is JDBC, which stands for Java Database Connectivity. JDBC is the standard API that allows Java application to talk at database. It provides the code ability to connect to a database, execute SQL queries directly and process the results. Think of it as the fundamental bridge between your Java code and the database. While it's a standard, but working with JDBC directly can be tedious and error prone. You have to manually manage every step of the process. Like opening the database connection, preparing the SQL statements, executing query, mapping the results to your object and most importantly, closing the database connection and other resources. This manual process creates a lot of boilerplate code and introduce significant risk. For example, if you forget to close database connection after you have done, it can lead to resource leak that can crash your entire application. This is a common headache for developers and is where modern solutions comes into play. Let's give you an example. Here is the screenshot of a code snippet of a JDBC example. Here you can see we need to open a database connection, then prepare the SQL statement, execute it, here, retrieving the results and finally, we need to close the connection. Working with raw JDBC gives you full control over the database access, but it requires managing everything manually and writing a lot of boilerplate code just for simple operations. To solve this, the JPA was introduced. This JPA stands for Jakarta Persistence API. JPA is a standard specification for mapping Java object to database table, a concept known as Object Relational Mapping or ORM. With JPA, you work with your Java objects and the framework handles the translation to database operations. With this JPA, we do not need to write SQL queries for common operations like saving or retrieving data. Here is an example. Let's say we have a product class annotated with entity and table. We have also other annotation for related fields. If you don't know anything about these annotations, don't worry, we'll cover it later. Now, with this, we can reduce this JDBC code to a simpler one. This significantly reduces boilerplate code and provides a cleaner, object-oriented way to interact with our database. However, JP is just a specification, a set of rules and interfaces. It does not provide the actual implementation code. To use JPA, you need a provider that implements the specification. There are many implementations available. Hibernate is one of them and most popular one. There are also some other popular implementations like Eclipse Link, OpenJPA and so on. As I have previously mentioned, Hibernate is the most popular implementation of the JPA specification. It is the engine that brings JPA to life. With Hibernate, you no longer have to write SQL for common operations like inserting, updating and querying data. Hibernate takes care of generating the necessary SQL statements for you. Hibernate also extends JPA with powerful features like reducing database queries by caching frequently accessed data. It can also generate your database tables based on your Java entity classes. While JPA and Hibernate are great, but there you still need to write a lot of repetitive code for the common operations like auditing, pagination and other common features. To make the database access even more simpler, the Spring team introduced Spring Data JPA. 
Spring Data JP is a project built on top of JPA and Hibernate that further simplifies data access of Spring applications. Its main goal is to eliminate the boilerplate code required for data access layers. Spring Data JPA provides a repository pattern where you can define an interface for each of your domain models. For example, to manage product entity, you can create a product repository interface that extends CRUD repository. By doing this, Spring Data JP automatically provides you all the implementation for common operations like save, find by ID, find all, and delete without you having to write a single line of implementation code. This allows you to focus on your application's business logic and let Spring Data JP handle the database interactions for you. Now, let's recap. The building blocks of database access in Java are JDBC, JPA, and Hibernate. JDBC is the low-level starting point. It provides full control, but we need to do a lot of manual work. Open the connection, write SQL, map rows, close resources. So here comes JPA. JPA simplifies this with an object-oriented approach. It is a specification that defines entity-based access, but it's just a specification. We need to implement this. Here comes Hibernate. Hibernate is the most popular implementation of JPA. There are many other implementations available, but Hibernate is the most popular. It can generate SQL, manages persistence context, can add caching for faster data access, and provide many helpful extras. And Spring Data JPA gives a simple repository interface that removes nearly all boilerplate code and provides common features like CRUD operations, paging, sorting, and simple queries right out of the box. And there are one thing, there is not a one-size-fits-all solution. Modern enterprise apps mix all these layers and use the right tool for each job. Now you have get a clear picture of the layers, JDBC, JPA, Hibernate, and Spring Data JPA. Next, let's put Spring Data JPA to work. We'll spin up a fresh Spring Boot project where the data source and our first entity and map it to the table. Step by step, hit the subscribe so you don't miss it and swing by Discord to share ideas or ask for help. Link in the description. See you there.